am very excited on this one. Uh, I've had several, <laughs> but this one seems to be one that's going to be righteous. It's going to be something that's going to make a difference. And I definitely wanted to talk with you tonight and your viewers so we all can be on the same page as we go into this new uh, 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 era, going into this new era. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, I, uh, you know, we're having so many problems in Detroit. We're still having problems, you know, with the police and the regular activities. However, the activities are based on, uh, can I say, everyday crime, and the police department are trying to fudge the records so that it will bring more people into the city. Economics is the base of all newspapers. They all belong to the corporations to increase the economics. So in Detroit, is no different than anywhere else. They're trying to hide the crime and at the same time trying to draw new people into the city. And I'm telling you, it's, it's very difficult because the people of Detroit are very suspicious. If we haven't done anything else in 2014, we've made the people question the authorities. And that is a blessing because we never did it before. Okay. So what I want to yep. So what I want to do tonight is try and steer some of that uh uh um uh, I wanna call it chastisement, but some of that suspicion, let's be sure and steer it in the right places so that those that are responsible for the lies and the continuous Negro, nigger, I love to say that word now, nigger, because nigger are the, are the definitions of our people that fall into the category of the, the, the corporate system, which means they are no good. They are ignorant, out to lunch, really not in the, the 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 limelight of becoming a human person or or better yet taking the position in the families of humans that are on earth and if we don't understand that we're going to be very much in the dark and the time is so short that we are not going to make it mm. so whatever is happening to us in regards to the murders, the deaths, the uh, all of the crimes that the corporations commit against us. It's only happening because our mindset is not really on truth, justice, and equality. Now, I know that sounds crazy because somebody's going to say, well, Ron, I just got stuck up last night and I've been friends with everybody. That may be true. But now when you search yourself, you got to really search yourself. And I'll ask you, were you really friends and are of, of love for your fellow man? Do you really love your mother, your father, your grandparents, your great-grandparents? Are you really following in the footsteps of your creator? And I can say without knowing you personally that you have not, because had you d done that, you would have moved to the front page of the newspapers that everything is changing in the city of Detroit. And it's not for me, let me add again, it's not for me to dictate what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, who will, who will not make it. I'm not even into that. I can only speak for Ron March. I can only do what Ron March believes should be done. And I want to dedicate my life this year to making a difference. Now, I've done a lot in the past, but this year is going to be a monster for me. That's why I told you, Bev, we want to talk about the New Year's resolution. Okay. What are you, okay. willing, what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to do in the new year that you have not done in the past? Okay. And that brings on a whole new program. 
So if uh, there's no – now, let me say – let me go back to the second page. You can listen to me for those that are – let me get this other screen up. Bev, I got so many screens throwing up, it's <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> now, you tell me I'm a professional now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Yes, I am. Now, listen carefully. I, I got a radio blog now. Okay. And blog talk, blog talk, not radio blog. Blog talk, radio. Okay. And my number is 718-506-1000. Six four. Okay. 718-506-1864. I got to get used to that. Now, what really happens with that number, you can watch me on my web page, which is Ron March Show. But if you have to go out, you can you can take your telephone and you can call this number and you can continuously listen. Or if you're not at home at the right time, you can still call the number and listen. So I, I look like, if I'm looking at this right, Bev, I got quite a few people on my chat in my chat room right now. Okay. okay. I don't know really how that works, but I'm working on it. And tomorrow will be my first show with my blog talk radio, where I will, I will do it with just Ron March in, and without co-host and without simulcast. Okay. So it's, it's going to be exciting. This year is going to be exciting. <laughs> and you, Bev, have done a wonderful job with your program. You're getting a lot of hits, or better yet, I'm getting a lot of hits, which goes through, and that's all all well and good. You're doing the, you know, the right thing and getting those hits. <clears throat> we want to blast them out all over. I want to reach the world. Because I've been told my message is, is powerful enough that it deserves to be heard. I don't have to brag. All I can say is I'd like for you to listen, and then you be the judge if it's worthwhile that you listen to Ron March. Okay. But other than that, everything else is golden. Okay. So let's, let's you, start. Go, go, go ahead, you, Beth. When did you say you was uh, starting your show, or had you started it already? No, I'm starting my new format tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Okay, okay. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Every Saturday, and it's the same setup, but every Saturday at 4, you'll be at Ron March Show, and I'll be blasting out of Detroit and, and, and talk about Detroit. Okay. On Tuesdays at 7 o'clock, it's so a locked-in time, 7 o'clock, I will be doing a show, and and it either be it will be with guests. Okay. Now, at this time, I have Texas as my guest, but there's several other individuals that I'm going to bring in as guests, okay? okay. Now, Wednesday is... Is your is your spot, Beth? Every Wednesday at six p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be with you until you jump me. <laughs> Tell me it's over. <laughs> and until then, but when, I'll when be you with you. get all those people uh, calling in and listening, say that again. I say, uh, I say, uh, I'm I'm going to. Uh, ride with you until you start getting so big that you ain't going to have enough room. <laughs> Man, <laughs> listen to me. You know me. I'll always have room for you. Believe, believe me, I'll always have I, I can't get that big because all of this is done be, between the agreement we made when I when I met you, and I'll never forget you. And so we're doing it together, and that's it. So two at uh, Wednesdays is your time slot right now, okay? All right. All right. Now, we're going to deal with New Year resolution. Now, I'll ask, what does that mean to most people to have a New Year's revolution? Resolution, revolution, resolution. Okay. Now, when I look up the word resolution, let me see what I got here. Yep. I got to go back. Hold on, Beth. I got to okay. go back. Can, can can you hear me? I just put some earphones on. Can you hear me? Yes, I, am I sounding the same? Yes. Okay. Same. You're sounding the same. Yes. Okay. 
right. Yes. Okay. Now, if I go, I could, I'm going to have to downsize this and go to my. Hold on. Are you there, Beth? I'm here. Okay. Okay, I got uh, 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 Andres over here, and he said we got disconnected. It must be from the blog. Yep. All right, here we go. Now, when I look at going on. I got to, <laughs> <laughs> and he told me he's, he knew you before he knew me, but he's he's a hell of a guy. Oh, he knows yeah. his he, business. He knows his stuff. He sure does. Y- yes, he do. All right. So now I'm looking at, uh, there we go. I'm looking at um, resolution. I put resolution. Yeah, I got quite a bit in here. And what I was trying to do, Beth, was make everyone, as a, as a resolution, go to, maybe I should just bring it up again, but go to the dictionary and look up these words. Quit taking other people's definition or think you know what they're talking about. When truth of the matter is, you're so far off, off base that it's it's really frightening that we have learned what they make us learn and or listen to or listen for when we're so far off the real definition is pathetic. And since Moore's, Moore's deal with law, and law deals with precise language, resolution. laws deal with precise language, and that's something that we all take for granted. But the courts will not tolerate any guesstimation. Okay, resolution. The state or quality of being resolute. Firm determination. A firm decision to do something. I'm here. Are are you there? Who is that? That's Andre talking. All right. Number three. A course of action determined or decided upon. We're talking about resolution. The act of solving or explaining a problem or puzzle. A resolution. The resolving or conducting of a dispute or disagreement. A resolution. The part of a liter- literary work in which the complications of the plot <coughs> are resolved or simplified. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> resolution. A formal statement of a decision or expression of opinion, but before or ado- before or adopted by an assembly such as United States Congress. I better read that one again. A formal statement or a deci- of a decision or expression of opinion, but before or adopted or before or adopted by an assembly such as United States Congress. Resolution, the act or process of separating or reducing something into co- uh, Constitutional parts. There you go. Number nine, resolution. Resolution. The clarity or fit fineness of detail that can be distinguished in an in and imagined, often measured as the number or the de- de- destiny of the discrete units. Wow. Such as plex or dots, plexo or dots that compose it. Let me read a couple, one more. Resolution, the progression of a, uh, what's, ooh, you know, these words is killing me, Bev. I ain't that here. Let me go to the next, let me go to the next one. The subsiding or termination of an Abnormal conditions such as a fever or inflammation, a resolution. Now, we're going to talk about a New Year's resolution. And the question is, what are
are we is two decisions to make. What are we as a as a Moorish nation prepared to do? And then what are we as individuals prepared to do in regards to the consciousness of the Moorish nation? Now those are huge commitments that has to be recognized. Resolutions, you make them every year. I'll stop drinking, I'll start jogging, I'll start doing exercises, all of those things. Okay, there's no big deal. But I'm looking at it this year as being a dedication of an individual. Quit calling me, asking me those left-handed questions when you have not did your homework. Stop listening to a, a blog talk when it's only given to you or you're only receiving it as entertainment. I, don't, I know I don't come on these, these airwaves and just to entertain someone. I am dead serious on the fact I want to raise, I must raise the consciousness of my people because I cannot be free until my people are free. Now, all of you out there are not my people. Those that are, know it. Now, that's the helpful thing to say. I don't have to designate who you are. You will designate who you are. And, Bev, I get goo gobs of emails, phone calls since I've been with you, mm-hmm. and I'm getting questions from uh, my furnace went out to my children have different last names. I'm getting calls from everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm coming after them the way I'm talking to you tonight. Stop calling me with a lot of that bull crap. Mm-hmm. Do some homework first. Do your homework. Now, if you call me and say, I check this out, I don't understand it. I check this out, and I don't think it's real. I check this out, and I'm thinking about doing it. These are progressive phone calls. Right. But to call and say, my my son just shot somebody. That ain't nothing progressive. Put his ass in jail. Why are you calling me? I, what can I do? You know? Right. And, and I mean that. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, and I'm not trying to act like nothing but a real person. And 2015 has to yield the support, understanding, and research of the viewers, listeners, and wannabes to be free. I can't do it all. I can only rattle your noggin, take you to the water, but I can't make you drink. I've never tried to make you drink. I love to tell you I'm lying. Everything I've said to you was a lie. Check it out for yourself. You have a heart, you have a soul, you have a mind. Once you read it and get into it, research it, your mind and your gut's going to tell you, yes, no, maybe so. Then you can call me and say, Ron, this is what I've done. Am I on the right track or not? And I'll be more than happy to leap right in there and say, hey, Let's get busy because we're going to move forward this year. We are going to make a difference in the United States of America. And I have to say it that way, United States of America, because they created the 14th Amendment, which made every inhabitant of this continent, of North America, a citizen, a pseudo-citizen, but a citizen of United States of America. I can't say it enough. They are the biggest crooks, the biggest liars. What else can I call them? Nothing but crooks, nothing but just persons that make our lives miserable. But they live comfortable. There is a ruling class in Detroit. I mean, yep, in Detroit, but in the United States that have lived good 
for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, especially coming out of 1871. And for anyone that's been listening to me, I can break those numbers down for you of 1871 and let you know I can break down antebellum, post-antebellum. I can break down the Civil War, number one, and the Civil War, number two. I can break down all of the language in antebellum was about United States. They never mentioned United States of America. I bet you never noticed that. Antebellum, the date that they created was a barefaced lie known as, here's the lie, Sinai. Sinai. Spell it. S I, I'm spelling little words. S I N E D I E. Sinai. That was the period that they stated that the country changed. From antebellum to post antebellum. Now, Bev, I want to leave the lines open because we need discussion tonight. I don't want to be dominant and just run a whole lot of stuff mm-hmm. because from from where we have come in the last couple of months, I, I'm sure there are questions. From what I'm getting online through my email address. And telephone calls, there are several questions that people have that we need to discuss. And I can bring those questions up, mm-hmm. but it has to deal with each individual, meaning you got to have a desire to learn, not for me to tell you every damn thing. I can't tell you nothing. I can only give you the knowledge of. It's for you. A lady called up and asked me, She was upset because the insurance company would not talk to her about molding on her kitchen walls. I'm saying to myself, what the hell I care? What is that about? (laughs) So I I said, ma'am, she said, my furnace went out. And when I called the insurance company, they told me they couldn't do anything about it. So then she said, I had to use my oven through the winter. They heat the house. Whoa. Wow. And from the oven heating the house, it peeled the paint off the kitchen walls and created mold. So now she's serious as a heart attack. I'm listening to her. I said, well, okay. Now, have, have you went downstairs and looked? Who put the furnace in? She said it was, it was in seven years ago. I said, ma'am, most furnaces, when they put them in, they give you at least a 12, 15, or 20-year warranty on a furnace. Did you happen to call the furnace company? She said, no. Mm. I said, well, why would the insurance company be responsible for a faulty furnace when Joe Blow's heating and cooling put that raggedy-ass furnace in? She got real quiet. She said, I never thought of that. Wow. I said, ma'am, go downstairs, get a flashlight, look around the bottom of that furnace. There's got to be a plate on there somewhere that said this furnace was put in in so many, at 1922, something like that, whatever it was, and it's going to give you the name of the company that put it in. And it sometimes it'll tell you there's a warranty, 15-year warranty. You need to call them people. Now, don't tell them what you're telling me. Call them and tell them the damn thing is broke. Get out of here and check it out. My warranty says this. When are you going to show up? Man, she got so, I can feel the relief. Now, I'm only telling you this and saying this to show that we are, as a nation of people, have been conditioned so much that we really don't think no. Nope. As to what we can really do. Yeah, that was the whole you know, thing. We, you know, we don't really need a whole lot of arguing and bickering and carrying on. And then I told her, if that is, if that, go downstairs, tell them when you call them, tell them that they got 15 years. It went out seven years. If they don't come out, now you got a lawsuit on the front, on the Joe Blow's heating and cooling. Now. Once you get that going, call me back, and we're going to call the insurance company and tell them you got damage 
in the kitchen. This is a whole different claim. You can't call them and tell them the claim is on a furnace that the insurance company didn't have nothing to do with. She said, oh, boy. She, I mean, she was really <clears throat> thankful, you know, and, and I'm saying, you know, wow. We need to start thinking and putting two and two together. But I understand. We've been in this madness so yeah. long. We can't see the forest for the trees. And then we got that humongous enemy that sets us so far in the dark that we can't see the forest for the trees, and it's called Christianity. We want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt because we feel from the teachings that to forgive, you'll be received tenfold or whatever that crap is. Okay, okay, well and good. But we've been in Christianity since 1800s, 1700s, especially since we have been treated like dirt in America. Ever since they crossed the Allegheny Mountains and came into our land, they have misused us. Well, they think... They've been treating us like a, a CSA, a prisoners of war. Yes, but we're afraid, or, or, or our Uncle Remus leaders are afraid to use the word refugee. Yeah. See, if we would use, I'm going to look that up. Give me a second. I'm going to pop up refugee. So that we'll un- there it is. So we can understand what is a refugee. Uh, they said okay. those people in uh, down there um, where the water bus that they were refugees. Now notice, yes, they did. But notice one thing, Beth. As quick as they said they were refugees, they stopped calling them refugees. Yeah. Right. Right. They yeah. slapped. They slapped Jesse Jackson like a like a like a nigga that stole some watermelon, and said, "If you ever use it again, you're gonna be in trouble." And I wouldn't be surprised after all the dirty work Jesse has done for that European, his son and daughter-in-law are in jail. Right. That may be a punishment for him to keep his mouth shut. I I can easily see that, you know. So let yeah. him tell me that I'm full of it. It's okay. I'll back off. But it looks like since you've done nothing but talk that madness about we shall overcome and, uh, you know, all that, you know. So it hasn't got us anywhere. Now you got your under underling, Sharpton, Al Sharpton, running the same crap, and we still – we're worse off today than any era of Martin Luther King. Any era of Martin Luther King, we're worse off today. Now, try to explain that to me, Jesse. How can that be? Now, you can use the Christian approach and say, well, we need to pray, or we need to uh, unite, or we need to come together as a people You know, all that's well and good. But show me how you do that. You see what I'm saying? Everybody's got a lot of lip, Beth, but nobody has the remedy. No. And and they're telling people to come together, but they're telling people to come together as the 14th Amendment citizens. Yes. They never go into that. I don't know any leader out there, you know, past. Now, these new cats... A Sear, a Jonah Bay, uh, um, that's about it, right? There's another, there's two more dudes, but I can't mm-hmm. call their names because I can't will yet. They give you the remedy. Here's how it works. Do this. Do that. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you the same thing. If I had, I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to tell you, go and look it up to give you support when you go in there. So you don't go in there and they talk about it. Yes, they do. 
But that first line of defense is there to to turn you around. So we need to look at and start building a nation. We need to be proud people. I told you what happened to me, Beth, when I was in Ghana. My wife and I went to Ghana. We spent uh, 14 days with uh, – we, we were sent there through Martha Jean, the queen, mm-hmm. on a brother named uh, Rich. was a brother to – Oh, I'm looking at her name. She was she was on the city council downtown, and they got rid of her. I'm looking at her. But anyway, we went because he had he married a queen, or better yet, not a queen, a princess of king or a king in Ghana, and we okay. met her, met the family, all kind of stuff, and we stayed with them for 14 days. It was a, it was one of the most awakening periods of my life. I lived with them. I, I ain't talking about going on a cruise. I'm not talking about being set up in one of a a a five a hotels. I ain't talking about that. I'm living in the house where they live every day. When I got up every morning and took a walk, they told me where to walk and how to get back. Cause I was in the city, right down there with them. You know, and I got a lot of stories to tell about that, but we ain't going in it tonight. But my, we have a nation of us all over the world that we in Detroit, in the United States, have no idea what it's about until we read the Europeans' paper, and then they tell us some crazy crap, you know, and then we start believing it because we don't know. But they're only doing that because they break. And or better word for hello. Yes. I'm telling you, <clears throat> hello, you Ron. Ron. Yes. Your phone yes. has dropped. Okay. You back? You back? We is it, is it, oh, all right. Now I, I pulled up refugee. Okay. One, one who flees, especially to another country. So you're out of your country going into another country, seeking refuge from war, political oppression, religious persecution, or a natural disaster. Every one of those individuals down in Louisiana were refugees. And they told Jesse, you better not bring it up again, because we, as a nation of black folks, have no idea what a refugee is. And if I'm not mistaken, some of those Negro pundits had an attitude because Jesse recognized us as being refugees. Some of them damn preachers said that we are not refugees. In other words, don't classify us as over in Vietnam when they had those million miles of people walking out of, of Saigon trying to get their freedom, trying to get the safe air areas and stuff like that. And everything that went on down there in Katrina was exactly what you saw on TV. But they did not want us to relate that in our minds that we live worse than they live over there. Because we live in a lie. They know that they catch in hell. So when they rise up, they kill everything in their path. We rise up and we got to differentiate between the good guys and the bad guys. Ain't no such thing. And the first thing that will happen when I get out in public and say, the hell with preachers, somebody's going to jump up and say, Ron, I appreciate everything you said, but my preacher ain't like that. And I'm saying to myself, where does this idiot come from? My preacher ain't like that. And yet, when we rob a bank or when we rape a white woman, the newspapers say black people rape white women. The, the black codes says that black people steal. 
Jim Crow, they pass laws that if you come out at night, they don't say good niggas, bad niggas. They say any nigga that come out at night of two or more must have a flashlight, must have a lantern. What the hell is wrong with y'all? They don't differentiate. Why should I? I say this. If I'm an outsider and can see a preacher is a damn idiot or a crook, it seems like the preachers on the inside should definitely see that he's a crook. So if he's going to be a rotten apple in the barrel of preachers, y'all preachers should throw his monkey butt out. But they know how to surround the wagon or get a couple of them bougie Negroes to get up and say something like, He's not that bad, or he's this, he's that. I'm willing to tell you everybody that go to church has a story to tell about their minister or that whoever y'all, whatever y'all call it. And it's not that I, I'm upset about that. What I'm upset about, like I told, I ran into a preacher this weekend at the bowling alley of all places. He wanted to talk. I wanted to talk. So I asked him one question. Why is it? That all ministers, preachers, ministers, monks, whatever you want to call them, why do they have a green light on the system when the masses of people go to jail every day? What is that about? How do y'all get away with that? What is it y'all doing that I that I'm not doing? I don't rob, I don't steal, but if I'm in the wrong place, I'm going to jail with the rest of them black folks. If you in the wrong place, you're going to flag your little Pad, little little pen, or you're gonna flip the Bible, or you're gonna say thank you Jesus, and they're gonna say you stand over there. Why is that? What is it that they want you to survive, and yet the masses go to jail? Talk to me. Because they are their ministers of information, their ministers of propaganda, their ministers of misinformation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the people can't see it, and they will still go. Because our nature, Beth, we are pure at heart. All people of melon, melanin are pure at heart. I'll stick my neck out and say that. Most, not most, some of us get on the wrong track and just say to hell with it, start robbing, killing, and raping, all of that. So they don't really belong to the Moorish nation. This is a problem they had all over the earth, way before the Europeans showed up. All of us are not pure in heart. But most of us are pure in heart. All of us are people of color, but there's a special category for those that are Moors. Believe me, there is a special category for those who are Moors. And that category has a lot of depth. And I won't go into it tonight, but going into February, that old nigger month, I'm going to bring all this out because I'm going to bring in some heavyweights that can explain it better than me. What is it about a Moor that makes him different than the masses? I can give it to you simple right now. You won't believe it, but a Moor has principles, and he lives by those principles. Most of us will work on the principles Monday through Friday or Saturday, and then Sunday we'll get into the principles, praise the Lord, and then Monday we're right back in the same track. The system creates that type of atmosphere because there's so much pressure coming from the system. Everybody's going to steal or do something wrong. Don't, you know, not everybody, but most of us would do something wrong. So that puts you off the path of righteousness. And I'm not preaching, and I'm going to stop it. But I'm just saying there's something different about more than the masses. And, I, you know, Bev, I say it all the time. Mm-hmm. Every Moor is black, but every black is not a Moor. Right. And we're talking, we're talking fifty, seventy-five, maybe a hundred million black folks in the United States, and all of us 
are not Moors, and all of us will never be Moors. So it's no big deal. We ain't, I'm not arguing with you. I'm looking at your, Martin Luther King used to say it, I'm looking at what you are, how are you living, what are you doing, how do you respect your ancestors. That eliminates a whole lot of people when you mention ancestors. Because number one, our history, all they give us is Negro history, picking cotton, singing old black yo. When I've been telling you there's so much to us, we are kings, queens, and gods and goddesses. It's just the path that we choose to walk on. Way before the European showed up, he only su- supplemented the evilness that is in us or that decision of right and wrong. He only implements that. He only makes it a stronger position for you to take. And they are masters at, I was talking to a brother today, we, they are masters at sizing us up or reading us. They can look or feel our vibrations before we get there. And anyone that works in the environment of Europeans, you should know. But if if you sleep and don't look at it, you'll never know. But any time you work in the environment of Europeans and the boss or I'll call him a boss, the owner, the, the person that's over you, European, see you talking in a group of two or more, it's automatic for him to come over and say, break this up. We got work to do. Yes, the boss, we going to work. <laughs> Them Europeans can stand around all day around a coffee machine, smoke cigarettes, and drink coffee. Ain't nobody going to say a word. But as soon as the blacks sit down at the table and start talking, no matter what they talk about, somebody going to come and break that up. See, these are standards that come out of the Christian black code. What is the Christian black code? Black codes. Well, you need to look them up. I bet you most of you out there never looked up black codes, Christian black codes of 1724. You need to look them up. You need to see what they did to us as a people. You look at movies like Quigley Down Under is a good one how those Europeans treated those aboriginals. That was worse. I mean, excuse me. What they did to us was worse than what they did to those aboriginals. And they brought Tom Selleck over there because he had a long rifle, and they said they needed it because the aboriginals were smart enough, listen to this bit, to get out of the range of the Europeans' rifles. They could stand two feet, and the bullet would drop down in front of them. Where did they get that knowledge? If the European rode after them, they would run. When the Europeans stopped, they would run far enough where the bullet couldn't get there. So the movie went on to hire and put up a reward for anybody that could shoot longer, further, had a long rifle, and they gave it to Tom Selleck. And he, of course, showing you how goodwill the European is, he going to come and not only uh, disagree with the European or the uh, Australians, he's going to join the aboriginals. It's a movie to see. But what they did to them was nothing compared to what they did to us because everything they did to them was against the law of the land. That's why they kept having those uh, British soldiers who came under the Commonwealth, or better yet, they ran the Commonwealth of Australia. They were checking them every day as to what crime did they commit. Here, the only place on earth, United States, that passed laws in the municipal governments that you were less than human. And y'all don't even know that. 
The the laws are still on the books. That's what hurts. They're still on the books. And the police department, the corporations, and some of these jack leg preachers, they preach it today. They even found it right. Isn't religion, isn't religion a corporation? Yes. Yes. Under names of Christianity, these corporations, and mm-hmm. they all, no, let me say it better. The religion that you're speaking of comes under the Ecclesiastic Corporation of 501c3. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what which one it is. Once you get up under that umbrella, you are rewarded certain benefits and privileges. Most of these jack leg preachers, especially when you see a preacher that can't read or write, you've seen them. I mean, I ain't got to get into that. They got a church, little old storefront, pounding. You go by his church that's next to four or five others. He got four cars in front of his church, and then there's 300 against the bigger church, all that kind of stuff. What the hell is that about? And they're all going to the same place, so they say. But it's not about that. And I was asking that preacher this weekend, I said, have you ever heard of the three badges? No. I said, well, let me enlighten you. There's only one reason why you are a preacher. It's because you have a job to do. And if you don't do the job right, if you don't go to jail, they're going to kick you out, and, or the IRS going to put your ass in jail. That's what they're going to do. He said, why is that? I said, because you're only given the privileges if you comply with the rules of the ministry. And the rules are to teach us not to fight, not to resist. And if we really, really, really are hurt and sorry, we will receive our reward in the by and by. And as I said that, I wanted to bust him upside his head. But he had never heard it that way. You were talking a foreign language to him. Yes, I was. I realized that after a while. Because he told me to go in the room and shut the door and pray to Jesus, and he'll appear. I said, man, you got to be out of your pee-picking mind. What the hell's wrong with you? I said, I've been calling for that dude for the last, I'm 79 years, 73 years old. First 50 years, of everybody called for Jesus. Man, has he ever showed up? What are we looking for for him to show up? He looked at me, and I said to myself, I'm wasting my time. But it was a reason that that conversation went on. That brother needed somebody to set him straight. And that's what I'm saying to everybody tonight. I want to talk about your resolution. What are you going to do to better your life, your family's life, and your people's life. You must dedicate your existence to that. And it don't call for a lot. It doesn't call that you got to go out and do a whole lot of crazy stuff. But you have to be conscious of what you are, your resolution is about. Well, what about people that, um, just say people that own property, shouldn't they go and secure their property? Isn't that part of taking uh, the land back? Okay. You got to add, you got to talk a little bit more. What do you mean secure their property? Well, just like go and, uh, you know how that the, county says that they own the land. You might pay off the house, but you still pay taxes on the land. So they got you, the corporation have you paying them, and how are you paying them for something that you already own? So shouldn't that be the first place where uh, a person starts right where they live at? Well, if you want to do the research on that, Biff, Mm -hmm. and I, I hear what you're saying, Mm-hmm. And I think from knowing you, you are into a project that has to be dealt with. And I think you should look at it and research it first mm-hmm. to find out what rights you have or don't have. Now, I'm, go- I'm, <laughs> I'm going to Atlanta 
Hey, I, I wanted to leave today, but I'm going to Atlanta within the next two weeks. Okay. And there's a gentleman down there that has some information that has really rocked my knocking. Now, let me talk to you about that. Let me talk to you about that. Now, listen to this. You, Beth, and I'm, on, I'm picking on you, mm-hmm. you have never seen the organic Constitution of the United States. No. Why not, Beth? They teach it to you. They come up with a whole lot of stuff to show you. They tell you what you can and cannot do. Why have you not seen the original Constitution? I can answer it quickly. Now, what about that one that they have at the museum there? Is that the original? Well, if it is, it better be in Arabic because the original wow. Constitution was written in Arabic. Okay. And if you go to Avalon and look it up, they will tell you that Harry Harry James translated it and he got a PhD from Harvard. That don't answer my question because I don't know Harry James. What you've seen that you think is the Constitution of the United States is a is a document called a municipal constitution. What is a municipal constitution? A municipal constitution is a copy of the original, but it was made in the interest of those who are in the municipality. Think about that, baby. When I went to look up the Constitution of of the of Michigan, I went and pulled it up, and they told me the first check that there's a 1963 Constitution of Michigan that was the one that's being used today because the other ones were repealed. And I've been told, which I should have known, you cannot change a contract, Beth. You didn't have nothing to do with the original contract. It was signed in blood. Mm. What has happened since then is the answer of what has happened is the United States Constitu- I mean, United States Congress today is 98% lawyers. Right. So that they could take the original Constitution and change it with legalese language and make it work for the times. Once they get it right, now they will repeal the one before. You and I read it, and they judge and tell us, well, we don't use that Constitution. What the hell are you talking about? How are you not going to use it? And I'm bringing that up is because if you go back and check the constitutions of the United States, especially the one of 1850, I didn't even know there was one, it will tell you that the land, you are the owner of the land and no one can take that land away from you. So what you just said is a legal lease statue that they created to take advantage of you, whatever that may be. That's why I ask you, I don't know what you mean by the word you use, taking your land, your land or taking care of your land, or whatever that was you said. I'm not aware of that. Well, it's saying. like, okay, like people, you know, they, well, your home. So your home is your castle. Uh, yes. That, that your land. And so yes. seeing like that should be the first thing that you take back is where you at. Okay. Okay. So I'll ask you, you're right. All right. Now, how can you take it back? If you haven't read or understand that they they have never taken it from you, they use a statue that's totally 
unlawful. You have to educate yourself as to the status or the shape that you're in. You got to realize what you're in. You're in a hocus pocus trick bag, dealing with liars. So now you need to research to find out where, how, and who lied. And I'm telling you that even 18, and I'm trying to bring it up as we speak, 1864. And I know I can't bring it up right. The national currency act. There's a PDF. <laughs> so the Michigan turn. Constitution, this nineteen sixty three is when they turned it into a corporation. So they don't honor uh when it was before that. But see, you say that. Wait a minute. You say that. I just told you that they don't have a right not to honor it because the original contract said this. They changed the law or the statute to me, to read it another way, and you're going to dictate to me what they changed. And I'm saying I don't want to hear that. That's all. Now, they're going to try and challenge me, Okay. So I'll say to them, and I wish, whoo, I should have had all this up in front. Anyway, what it says is this, man, and and you've heard some of these heavyweights bring this up, and Mm -hmm. that is this, especially uh, 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 Duke of Tears and a couple more of them heavyweights. They bring this up, and this is what they say. There are... There are legal rules in every constitution to demonstrate how a statue can become a law. And I can ask you right now, do you number one, do you know this? Give me an answer. Do I know that there are legal rules? Would you just read? Yes. Constitutional constitutional rules that no. declares what is a statue and what is not a statue? Okay. Yeah, well, I Number know two. the different statues that they have. All right, but but that ain't what I ask you. They got goo gods of statues, right? But are they are they really lawful statues by the Constitution? And which, I'll answer that for you. Constitution, you talking about theirs or the, the one before the theirs? The original and everyone after the original. That's where legal leads come in. They never change the original. They just give you legal leads. I should look that up. Legal leads mean that they can take it and make it sound like something that it really ain't, but it's saying the same thing that the first one said. It's almost like gobbledygook. (laughs) <laughs> it's just a lot of words that you read and you say, oh, shit, I don't know about that. But what it's saying is you have rights. But since you read it, you can't see it because it's legalese. That don't make sense to you, does it? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Well, I'm telling you, and I'm, I'm going to take a break, but I'm going to tell you and I'm going to search that None of the statues that affect us, such as a good one, is the emergency manager. All of that is illegal, unlawful, because they didn't do it right. But then nobody challenged them. That we don't never challenge them. Why don't you challenge a uh, uh, Bev once well, you I, find I out what know. it is? I, right. I have to. I'm learning. I'm just. You just opening my eyes up. Right, 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 and that's where the that's where the problem lies, because they don't teach us how to research. Okay, and I'm going to show you when I come back from break. I'm going to read it, but I think I can pull that up real quick. But this uh, national security, I mean national currency act, is so big that I'm going to catch hell trying to trying to deal with it. But I'm going to try and do it. So let's take a break. It's eight. Okay. It's eight o'clock. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, I can hear you. All right. I was trying to to uh, really find that National Currency Act, but 
I'll tell you what it said, Beth. Okay. That no real property can be used as collateral, and it must be rotated every five years if you if there's a way of using it as collateral, but it can only be used for five years. That's what it says. And that anyone that does it more than five years are committing fraud. Now, this is in the National Currency Act, and I definitely have it. I just rushed. I don't have my thumb drives, but I just rushed to try to do it quickly during the break, and I couldn't get to it because that, that National Security Act is so huge. Maybe I could do it another way, and that is uh, I know what I can do. And I should have thought about it. Um, if I put in National Security Act, and then um, and then put mortgages. So you say that the, the mortgages are not supposed to be no more than five years. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Yes, ma'am. So by, that thirty by, that thirty year and fifteen year mortgages are illegal. It's, it's unlawful. Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes, and it's in it's in the National Currency Act, later called the Bank Act. And I tried to rush and bring it up, but it it well it, what you, you know, just told us was the was the bottom line. Um, Yes. It's illegal. It's unlawful. Yes. Yes. Now, listen to this one. Okay. In, in the Constitution, in order for a statute to become a lawful law, quote unquote, mm -hmm. a statute, it must be read in each house three times. And it cannot go into effect until 90 days after the close of session. Now, all the time they talk about lame duck sessions, as they did with the emergency manager, by passing the Emergency Manager Act during Christmas or the shutdown period, was all unlawful. Now, in order to fight it, you must file a lawsuit in the federal court under diversity of the Constitution. Now, you're going to say, why has no one done it? No lawyer is allowed to challenge the Constitution. What about uh, citizens or what about... Just, just like uh, the welfare rights uh, people, you know, they did the water thing. Now, just say another group of people was to challenge that. Okay. Now, I told you that I brought up all of my laws, or better yet, all of the legal leaves or legal laws of the Constitution, and their lawyers shut it down. Because they knew if they challenged it from that base, they would lose their P numbers. You need to realize the power of the P number. It's like a, for, for you, if, if you work employment, and if you step out of the bounds of employment, you get discharged. But, also, now, I mean, it doesn't are, have to be only an attorney that can challenge it. Can it be peop, a person no. that knows, like, a seer and guys like him that know the uh, the law? Yes, yes, yes. Anyone challenge it. Now they're going to throw this at you in your face. You cannot, how do they say it? You don't have license to practice law. So the judge is going to attempt to shut you down at all lower lower court levels because you're not a qualified attorney. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, the answer to that is, as I've always said, Judge, if you show me your license, I'll show you my license. He doesn't have it. He has a P number. Now, if you're not aware, he's going to give you the P number, his so-called, quote, unquote, license. You got to be aware enough to say that's a P number. That's a membership card, just like the golf course of a illegal entity known as the bar. He's going to shut that court that way. He's not going to let you talk that way in his court. That's why you have to sue on the federal level, and you need to challenge boxes. Because if you ever filed a lawsuit on the federal level, they give you a cover sheet. And at that cover sheet, it's got goo gobs of boxes. Fill out the boxes in order to get the uh, best uh, 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 movement for your decision to file. Now you're in a area of nothing but you and your people, if I say that. Because they're going to fight you to the nail. They know you're right. And they don't have any recourse to challenge you. You follow me? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to rush down to read you Article 19, and I hope I'm there. There it is. Oh, that's not it. Okay. If we go to 18. So where we cannot okay. where we cannot use um, the esquires and the, and those kind of people, but we can use the what do you call a seer the the ones that practice uh, ju- juris juris uh, I can't pronounce it, but you know what I'm talking about what they are juris too yeah yes yep okay and what about it. No, I'm just saying for uh, the the remedy, the answer for you can't come in their courtroom unless you an attorney. But for a lot of people that are Moors and they they don't feel comfortable going into the courtroom, can they hire people like a seer to uh, represent them? They, they a seer and them would not represent them. Because you're not supposed to be in their court. You try to get your mind to tell you. Okay. On to their court. You're supposed to be exempt from all of their statutes. You got it? Okay. Where? Well, well how do you But fight? since you're not aware. Uh-huh. Okay, you need to learn how to fight. This is when you use the uh, special appearance, yeah, which is a letter that you send, a notice, a effort send to the courts prior to you showing up. Right. Now, here's a problem with that. that I, I learned the heart, my sons and I learned the way. When you do those processes that I just mentioned, Mm -hmm. they, on the day of your uh, personal appearance, they're going, they say that it's automatic. The the computers do it. They always say they didn't do it because they know they can go to jail for doing it. They will issue a warrant for your arrest. So Uh. it may take a week. It may take a year. It may take 10 years. Okay. Now, when they arrest you, they're going to make it as miserable as possible, not physical damage, but they're going to take you off to some isolated place and then, you know, leave you there until they got 30 days in order to bring you before a a court. They're going to say, we're going to use the 30 days because supposed to show up on a particular date and you did not. So you are in default of the court. Now you're going to win this, but you're going to have to spend those 30 days in jail somewhere. You follow me? Right. 
Now, you're not not ready for this. You know what I mean? You got to go to work. You got a family and all of that. Do that to shut you down. You got to know what you're doing when you do it. Now, those cats like Sear and, 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 and Jonah Bay, those heavyweights know how to submit the proper paperwork and then for you to show up in the proper language and in a matter of five minutes, it's over with. They have no jurisdiction over you. These are the things that I'm rushing to discover and to prepare myself so that I can be in that position that to get out of their jurisdiction. Now, I will get out of their jurisdiction under my spiritual name, which is El Kim Mayat Kayat Bay, but I will always be in their jurisdiction under the slave name. Because I didn't sign, your mama signed you into the slave camp, and at the same time, she gave up her rights as your mother and acted on the grounds of what they call infamat. She was a snitch. Now, all of this is legal bull crap, but it holds up in corporate court or corporate contract. They would take your foot and make a signature with your foot. A baby, I'm talking about the baby right. foot. Right. Mama turns you in to the to the ward to the state because you are a ward of the state. Uh, that makes you a ward of the state. They will create your your name in all capital letters. They are not allowed to change your name. They're not allowed to uh, do anything to you under your, I hate to use the word Christian name, but under your name. Now, it's only a Christian name because they labeled it a Christian name, and you don't know the difference. So you need to create your own name. If you don't but call yourself Beverly D. Bay. Follow me? Right, right. It's H-U from all caps, Beverly D. It's, it's, it's deep, but it's simple. Listen to this. And read it the way it was read to me. I am on Article 16... 1850, United, a Michigan Constitution, and the title of Article 16 is Exemptions. You get that? Yeah. The personal property of every residence of the state. I'm going. I'm coming directly at you, Bev. Mm-hmm. The personal property of every resident of this state to consist of such property only as shall be designated by law shall be exempt to the amount of not less than $500 from sale on execution or other final process of any court issued for the collection of any debt Contracted after the adoption of this Constitution. Now, I'm going to challenge you, Bev, to go and get that. What, the, uh, the, article, what the Article 16? It's, it's, a, it's the 1850 right. Constitution. Okay. And you're going to go to Article 16, which is titled Exemptions. The first section is called Personal Property. Okay. Now, there's some language in there that's gobbledy. 
But when I was taught, they showed me, and I and I'm gonna I'm gonna get it right. But they showed me this section that says every property shall be exempt to the amount of here's where the here's where the trick comes, not less than five hundred dollars from sale. So they can't take your property and put a lien on your property and you sign a promissory note of 100,000 200,000 when it says it cannot be no less than $500 now that no less than is what throws me off i, I i'm going to admit it throws me off but i have been told that it means they cannot use your property and i i read the last part or other final process of any court issued for the collection of any debt contracted after the adoption of this Constitution. So we all live after 1850. So they can't use your property for collection of a debt. You well, they say, they say the land. They saying, don't they say that they um taxing you on land, land? is what we're talking about. Land okay. has trees. Land has trees. So the question is, it, are the, is the land developed or undeveloped? If it's developed, it's a house. Same thing. It's still land. Well, what about if they say that, that their infrastructure? is on the property. So that gives what them a right. The the you the, the pipes up under the land, the pipes, the, the gas, the water. Okay. All right. Now you bring it on a whole different um uh, argument or debate because I would be concerned I'm concerned about foreclosures and taking our property. That's mm-hmm. number one. Mm-hmm. Now, you're bringing up the minerals in the land. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, I'll have to do research on that, but I'm sure that uh, a, 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 a loaded title mm-hmm. of the land will give you rights to everything in, on, and above the land. Mm-hmm. Okay. But they come up with these of uh, statues that throws you off. Right. And all of the statues, I wish I could go to it right away, but I can't really. Maybe let me go back and see if anybody online can tell me if the brother's listening. Let me see where I'm at. Nope. What if is your number? What is, what is your number? Oh. <laughs> my, my call in number, my guest call in number mm-hmm. is 718. Area code seven one eight five zero six one eight six four seven one eight five zero six one eight six four. My chat room is loaded, but I don't I, I don't have any calls right now. Okay, they're yep. listening. Yep, they're listening. Now I'm going back because. He told me exactly where. Oof, I wish I could find it. And corporations. He told me exactly where to find in in our constitutions where you can find how to make a stat. What is a statue? Now I know what I can do just to. Uh, now, you, you said a, a statue has to be read three times or three days. It has to be read three times in the in the halls of Congress before all three houses, executive, judicial, and, and legislative. Three times each, each statue. And it cannot go into effect until 90 days after the
the session. So if you vote on it, the second, everybody gets two years. Well, let's go with two years. So the second year or Christmas, and you go through the proper procedures of announcing it and all of that, and then it passes. So now we're close to New Year's. They in Detroit and Michigan leaped on to and made it a law the following Monday after they voted on. I thought they had to wait. I thought they had to wait ninety days. I just, I'm telling you, they (laughs) gotta wait ninety days. I'm being funny. I'm being funny. (laughs) You follow? They gotta wait ninety days. After now, listen. After the so the the fiscal year of sessions is normally I don't know I don't name it let me trying to guess. Mm-hmm. But let's mm-hmm. say it's January. The end in December before New Year's, mm-hmm. and now they got to wait January, February, March. It cannot go into effect until the end of March. Okay. They have put all of their laws since this crook has been in office, which would be Snyder. Everything he voted on goes in the following Monday after Friday. And as you said, no one says a word. No. Okay. Now, I need to ask you, why is that? A bit better yet, can you tell me why that? And I know you don't know. I'm not asking you for that. Well, but 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 I'm I, asking I, you. For uh, one thing, <laughs> but, people but, but, don't but. people don't know, and, and and another thing, the attorneys can't challenge them. That's like why a, not? A, a dog. The, ter- ter- the attorneys can file. Yeah, but the attorneys can file a lawsuit. And that's how it normally works. But didn't you say that the they were? Fi- they all work for the queen. They can't. They all belong to the same gang. Yeah, correct. But you didn't hear my words. Okay. I said they can a lawsuit, but there are consequences of filing a lawsuit. So they don't. They'll give you some gobbledygook as why it won't work. That's where Christianity comes in again. They're going to make it a Christian approach that we don't want to go that way now. We're going to go this way at a later date. Some old crazy crap. You so, so or they'll tell you, well, we're going to vote these people out. Go ahead. So what is our resolution? What is What is a a resolution for 2015. My resolution, I'm trying to lay this out. I've been talking about it. And that is, we need to dedicate our lives to being free. That's number one. Okay. How do you do that? You need to choose a subject matter such as your nationality. Now, I told you I'm wearing a medallion that differentiates me from you people. It's only a a medallion that's called the United Nubian Nation of Moors of the world. And then it has Umassi at the bottom. Umassi, Wachita, Algonquin, all of those tribes comes under the Moorish nation. So now, what is that about? I've I've studied enough to know that Noble Drew Ali said to find out a way it ourselves from a nigger, a Negro, a colored, a black, Afro-American, all of those labels that they give us from the system, 
that causes them to treat us as Negroes. And I love to say to people, why is it that we do not have a nation? Now, we're the largest uh, group of people in the United States, and we don't have a nationality. How can that be? Ron, we have a call. You want to take a call? I'll follow you. Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. All right. Let's see. Um, area code, your code, six, seven, eight, 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 six, I was on your line plus Ron's line. This is Jonah Bay. He was ah. looking for me, so I called all in. I called in. I didn't know which one of y'all was going to pick up oh. first. Okay. Oh, okay. That Good afternoon, brother. That was the problem. Okay. How you doing, right. brother? How you doing, Be- Miss Bev? Good. I, Good. I'm doing wonderful myself, brother. I'm telling you. Yeah. And I love you yeah, calling I in. You I appreciate it. No doubt, no yep. doubt, Ron. I got but you. But I was certain you know. some knowledge that you and I had. Yeah. Right. All right. You it told me that. Section, <laughs> it's section 19 and 20, and it says every bill and joint resolution shall be read three times in the House before the final passage. No bill or joint resolution shall become a law without concurrence of the majority of all the members elected of each house on final passage of all bills, votes shall be yeas and nays entered in on the journal. So they have a journal that shows you what has been passed properly. Now it says no law shall embrace more than one subject which shall be expressed in the title. No public act shall take effect or be enforced until the expression of 90 days from the end of the session at which the same is passed, unless the resolution shall otherwise direct it by two-thirds of a vote, members elected in each house. So Ron is saying what he's saying is right. It takes 90 days after they uh-huh. even pass it for it to go into effect. Now, that doesn't yes. even say that they had more than one issue in at the time. They can only pass one issue at one time. Now, let me tell you something. All the laws they can pass at one time, that is unconstitutional. That's why those are special law or what you say municipal laws, and it's not real law. It's not real law. It's not constitutional. So so you mean when they pass a law and they say it's... that we got you. They're gonna uh, own the street lights. They're gonna own, or they're gonna pass a bill about the roads, and it, it might have four or five different things in there. They can't do that. Nope. nope. One subject <laughs> at a time. At a time. And the way yes. they're getting away with it is, y'all don't know because y'all have not been enforcing the Constitution. This is why yes. Noble Drew Ali said. Enforce the Constitution. The problem is y'all don't know how your local state government is supposed to run because we supposed to know the state's constitutions through and through. And you want to use the ones before 1933 because yes. everything after 1933 is municipal constitutions. Yes. Now, where did you get that? You, we're talking about 1850. I know you gave it to me. Now, what yeah, article 18, did you get that 15, from? That's 19, it's, uh, 18 and 19. Oh, I, yes, I forgot. Yep. What, was the art, what was the article? That's where I messed up. Okay, article 1. Okay, the article. Okay, hold on one second. Let me go back up. Yes. Now, now these were sections. Oh. 18 and 19. Yeah, that it's, was uh, Article 4. Article yeah. 4. Oh, Article 4. That's why I couldn't uh-huh. find it. Yes. Article 4. Then go down to 19. 
18 and 19. Yes. Okay. Man, oh, man, oh, man. And when he was talking Bro. about the, uh, the uh, what's the names about the houses? Yeah, it says anything less than. Uh, what it means is if your house is over four, $500, it's supposed to be exempt. Anything over $500 is, is exempt according to this Constitution. Wow. So that's what that means. I, that bothered me they, when we talked that about legal that, 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 that. Yeah, that's yes, that legal yes. ease. <laughs> yes, Why they word yes. it that way? <laughs> because if they wow. worded it the way I said it, you would understand it. <laughs> right. Yes, 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 yes. But I'm looking at that 19, every bill and joint resolution shall be read three times in each house, Beth, yeah. before the final passage thereof. And they never do that. They never, never. do it. And, and, and then you got laws that... Uh, <laughs> They're killing us with these illegal statutes, yeah, and we yeah. and we need to challenge it. And we can't use attorneys because they all belong to the same golf course. And you got to remember that. And you can't be angry at them because that's the only work they know. Right. Most lawyers would starve to death if they take that P number away because they never learned anything else. But with all those years in college, what else can they do? You dig it? So you got a problem. Brother Jonah, you, you are a blessing in disguise. And uh, I'm coming to see you. That's all I'm going to say. I know. I'm coming, I, I brother. I to your son. We had a great conversation before he, you know, went uh, on vacation a little something with his kids for the holidays. But uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting you and your son, Ron. And uh with that You'll being be said, I, I'd like to uh, get off the line because I don't want to hog you and Miss Beth's show. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you come with good information. Thank yes, you, I'm glad you, you you helped me on that. So I appreciate you. You know I do, brother. Peace All right, and love. Thank you. Thank Peace you. and love, Peace guys. And love. Peace and love. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Please hold you. And, and, All and, right. Uh, and, and and someone in the, in the chat room is saying that a con- the Constitution is simply a debt obligation in itself. It is. You're, 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 you're right. It is. Because like he said, it's a municipal obligation. And that's why it's worded where they can take money from us. And that answers where you are, Bev, or not mm-hmm. where you are, but what you were saying in regards mm-hmm. to what can we do or what should we do or how can we protect our properties and stuff like that. Because I, I had a neighbor that challenged them, but he ended up losing his property. Yes, because he was probably, number one, in the wrong court. That's where you make your, make your mistakes. Uh. Because the lower courts are only there to make money. A judge is a bank, a president of the bank. That's all he is. And it goes all the way up to, quite as kept, I would say, Supreme Court. As long as you stay in those municipal courts, you're going to catch hell. You're not going to get a victory. Mm. You dig? So he should have been, you... been in federal court then, huh? Yes. Yes, okay. and he should have checked the proper boxes. It's more to the federal court than being in federal court. Because once they see you don't know what you're doing by just filing a federal complaint, it's mm-hmm. just as bad as the lower courts. But when you say there is a, for example, what we just learned from Jonah Bay, those would be diverse, constitutional diversities. Where the Constitution says this, but y'all are doing that. We need a ruling from the courts, which is and which is not. You dig it? Mm-hmm. Now, once they say that the courts are correct, now we're ready to go to war. Because they have violated, when I say war, I'm talking about war, but not from us. Now we're going to the United Nations because they have violated the contract 
of United States of America that was signed in 18, uh, 1789 or those contracts that were signed prior to that. They have violated it. You see? And we okay. always say that, well, why are they going to do what he want to do? That's a very, very, very negative attitude to take because you have to be ignorant that you have not challenged him on what he's really doing or not doing. Because what you discovered tonight, Bev, is a whole new ball game for yes. you. Yes, yes. And you know that over half the people you know have no idea what the, that this was even meant, the Constitution of, right. the, of uh, Michigan. Right. You see what I'm saying? And another thing we need to know in, in, 18, 18, in 2015, thoughts are things. Yes. Thoughts or things. So if you got a negative attitude by getting yeah. this information and stepping out there looking for some salvation, you'll never get it. Because you've already zeroed yourself out by saying it's not going to work before mm -hmm. you even step out there and do it. That's right. the greatest thing in the world. But it happens, and we're all guilty of it. And we say things that are negative and don't realize that we're saying it. And that's true. Saying it. Yep. So words are things. Thoughts are things. Because thoughts create words. Words create things. Because once you put it in the atmosphere, it's going to attempt to materialize and manifest itself. So by believing it, it makes it a reality. And you will be the first one to call me and say, Ron, I did everything you said. I told you it wouldn't work. Right. That's how it works. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. And now I know from that that you zeroed yourself out before you even got started. Yeah. I got a guy in my class. I hope he's listening tonight because I don't even want him to come back. But he wants to tell me why things are not happening. And what are you doing to make it happen? Nothing. He just waiting on it not to happen, and then he texts me to say, well, they killed another black guy today. What's the United Nations going to do now? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You see what I'm saying? Right. We need to change. This is the New Year's resolution, baby. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. need to change our whole concept. Our whole paradigm needs challenging. And some of the ingredients that you need to get rid of is Christianity, the process of Christianity. I'm not asking you not to believe in your creator. I'm talking about the doctrine of Christianity. Dump it. Just get rid of it. And that'll clean your mind. You'll be surprised how things will start happening for you. Yeah. You dig it? And don't right. every time something good happens, you want to say, thank you, Jesus. Stop that. <laughs> Stop it. Give credit where credit's due. If you didn't believe it would happen, it never would have happened. So go with that. Challenge those things. And it'll be a better year for you. I'm telling you now. A lot of us are not going to do it. A lot of us seem not going to even think about doing it. That's okay, too. I know what I'm going to do, and I'm letting you know what my resolution is. I'm living every day to be free. I worship my mother and my father, who's passed, my grandparents on both sides, who's passed, and my ancestors. And I know they lived a fruitful, peaceful life. All that crap they, that they come out with in Hollywood, shove it. I don't even want to hear it. Now, now, someone, seconds. now someone in the okay. chat room is saying birth implies legal abandonment because the mama signs you over to that what? corporation. Say that. Hmm? Did you yeah. hear me? What, what is legal abandonment? What, birth. Say when, it again. when a baby is born, birth implies oh. legal abandonment. And you know, a lot of times when people well, fight, uh, fight, um, sixty divorce, seconds. 
they that's what they're they they go on abandonment. Yeah. So is that you getting ready to cut off, Ron? Yes, I'm looking at it. Forty five oh. seconds. Okay. I'll still be on the air as usual, oh, that's right. man. Yeah, so and the ones I'm not that's sure. on the radio, the ones that's on, the, I mean, that's on the phone, yes. are able to still hear. So, so yes. um, they were so saying my, that birth implies legal ab- abandonment. Well, I, I'm not. I don't agree with that. I need more okay. input on that. Okay. Okay. Because it's it's not legal abandonment until Mama gives it up. All mamas don't give up their baby in the hospital. I know Bobby L. right here in Detroit, his daughter did not give up the baby. Now, she had a fight on her hands. They had to break out of the hospital at night to get away. Mm. But she did not give her child up. You you dig it? Right. So, I mean, that's why I'm reluctant to agree with that. And if the mama would sign and reserve her rights, that would challenge the birth of being abandonment. Okay. When she signs all those papers, every time she signs her name, put on there at the bottom, all rights reserved, or UCC 1-207 or 308. Ron, we're getting a lot of feedback. I can barely hear you. We're getting a lot of feedback. Okay. So we're, I hear it we're, also. we'll come back next Wednesday uh, at 6 p.m. All right. And we're going to have a, a better, this is going to be the best year in the history of the United States of America. So let's all think about this program tonight and work on a New Year's resolution. And we'll well, all be better people. One of my resolutions is I'm going to start reading this Michigan Constitution. <laughs> Way to go, Bev. And keep That's your call, I'm going to get into it deeper. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get into it deeper. Until next week, Bev, I'll be on tomorrow okay. on my show, Ron March okay. at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Okay, and and also, Brian, we got to come back Sunday because we're going to uh, have a fear on Sunday at 9 yes. p.m. Eastern yes. Standard Time. I'm so glad you reminded me. It's, it's a lot of uh, information, so um, nobody has an excuse to say they don't know because the information is here. All right. Okay, Until Ryan. Sun- Till tomorrow at 4 and Sunday at night. Yes. Peace and love, Ron.